Bibliophiles of the internet, my name is Adriana and today I'm here just to quickly introduce my reading vlog for the week. So I'm currently reading two things, the first of which is a buddy read I'm doing with my friend Gande from I Am Rainbow who runs an amazing book blog called Latinx Magic and together we are reading The Resolutions by Mia Garcia. We both love it so far, it's an incredible own voices Latinx YA contemporary story that begins with this group of four Latinx teenagers as they're going into New Year's Eve and they all realize that they're carrying with them their emotional traumas and emotional blocks. So therefore they decide they're going to let their friends handle their resolutions for them and they each get to make resolutions for every other person in the group and in the coming year they have to honor those resolutions no matter what. Honestly, it is deeply emotional and moving, but it's also fun and delightful and bright. I love the dialogue, I love the banter, there's great friendship dynamics, and I love all of these characters so much. And it's just a story that emanates such a feeling of warmth and love and that truly celebrates friendship and community and self-acceptance. For anyone, I think it's so hard to see yourself in a way that is true and honest and forgiving, and the story shows the importance of having friends who can believe in you even when you don't believe in yourself. And to have those people in your corner who see who you truly are and who you can truly be if you would push yourself and just go past your limits is so important and this story celebrates that kind of support. So that's the gist of the story so far. I'm really, really enjoying it and I can't wait to hopefully finish it this week. The other book I'm working on that I'm hoping to finally finish very soon is Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore. This is an arc I got from Fuel and Friends, I believe is the imprint, and it comes out in January of 2020. So as Brody would say, a bitch has clout. As per Anna Marie McLemore as usual, this is Own Voices Queer Latinx Magical Realism and it's set in both the 1500s and the present. The story follows both the mythologizing of and the unfolding of this mysterious plague or curse that caused people to dance themselves to death and seem to be connected with these mysterious, possibly magical shoes. And the two characters in the present day are descended from people who were directly involved with this plague or curse. For instance, one of the characters is descended from the family who was blamed for the curse and the other is descended from the family who actually makes the shoes themselves. It is such a fascinating exploration of how we engage with and understand and reconcile history and trauma and it is just so beautiful and so much darker and creepier than what I think Anna Marie McLemore usually writes and I'm really loving it. It definitely has a lot to say about the experience of being othered, of being targeted for being different, the power of fear and the effects of fear. I cannot wait to share more about this story with all of you because it is a truly incredible book. So that's what I'm currently reading, that's what you're going to hear about in this reading vlog this week unless I finish those things and start something else, so wish me luck and I will check in later with another update. So it is currently Wednesday and I actually finished both books and I love them both in completely different ways. Let's start with Dark and Deepest Red which honestly goes so hard in its exploration of fear and especially being taught to fear and hide yourself away for the sake of someone else's comfort. Kind of like Anna Marie McLemore's first book, this story returns to the dynamic between a Latinx character and a Romani character and how both of them come from a culture that is feared and misunderstood and thought of as less. This story definitely shows how these characters repress themselves and reject parts of themselves in order to pass, because to pass is to avoid scrutiny and judgment. There's a moment when one of the characters, Emil, talks about how he avoided learning his own family's history, especially in relation to this plague, because he was afraid of what he would find, and more importantly, afraid of what he might learn about himself. 
And I think that really speaks to how marginalized folks are actively kept from their truth and themselves in so many ways. And I touched on this in my introduction clip, but I think this story is much darker and more unsettling than Anna Marie McLemore's previous books. The stories they usually create are about characters losing control over magic, which is dark in its own way, but this idea of people losing control of their bodies, losing complete agency over their bodies, being at the mercy of this uncontrollable, destructive dance is a really haunting concept. In their author's note, Anna writes about how the original story was meant to be a tale cautioning against the tempting beacon of the female form and all of its sins, and how they wanted this story to be not about the forbidden, but about unlocking the power of passion and ferocity, and how powerful and compelling it is when people know exactly what they want. They talk about the dancing as a form of surrender and disruption, giving in to what scares you, and finding a way to use that to make yourself strong strong, and I really appreciate that. As always, when it comes to Anna Marie McLemore, it was a really powerful, magnificent story, and one that I will not soon forget. It definitely earned its five stars. Then the resolutions just totally hit me in the feels, made me feel all the soft friendship vibes, and I just fell in love with this friend group and their struggles as they try to understand what their futures look like, both together and apart. When we first started reading this book, I told Kande that the story gives me the same feeling as reading a really good fanfic, which is honestly the highest compliment I can give a book. I think some people falsely equate fanfiction with mediocrity or lack of technique, when really fanfiction is about evoking a feeling of warmth and love and familiarity and a feeling of knowing that the writer cherishes these characters, and this story definitely made me feel that. I think I connected with Ryan the most, who's this character trying to deal with heartbreak and rediscovering who he is outside of a romantic relationship, which is a really great question. How do you understand yourself and love yourself without the help of someone else? There was a great moment when his grandmother, his ama, tells him that he's trying to recreate and rebuild a person who no longer exists. He's trying to go back to this ideal version of who he was before he knew heartbreak, which is no longer his reality, it's no longer his life. And I think that speaks to how everyone in this group with these resolutions is trying to achieve some ideal version of themselves, and there's a fundamental disconnect between what they need and what they want. Like I said, the characters definitely go through it. It can be hard to read at times because the story does explore pain and anxiety and panic attacks, but overall I found it to be a tender, honest, heartfelt story, and I think I'm gonna give it four stars. So now, if I have time, I might go on a walk or take an anime break and think about what I would like to read next. I'm currently debating between Loteria by Cynthia Paleo or Hermosa by Jessica Salgado, but I guess we'll see what I end up choosing in my next update. So it is currently Friday, and surprising no one, I went with a completely different book and started listening to Mercy Suarez Changes Gears by Meg Medina, read by Frankie Corzo. So this is an award-winning own voices middle grade story about a young girl named Mercy whose big Cuban family all lives on the same street, and she also kind of feels like an outsider because she and her brother are scholarship students. She is just starting the sixth grade, and because she is on scholarship, she has to do extra community service to make up for the tuition difference. This year, her assignment is to be a sunshine buddy for a new student, which is basically like being a mentor or just a friend, kind of helping them navigate and adjust to this completely new place. There are some girls at school giving Mercy crap about her sunshine buddy assignment, and things are also tense at home because her abuelo, Lolo, is starting to forget things, have mysterious accidents, and he's getting mixed up more easily than before. I am really loving this so far, which is no surprise because I love middle grade and I love characters like Mercy who are very collected on the inside and know exactly what they want and exactly what they think, but then are still learning how to express themselves 
himself in their words and their actions. Like in her head, Mercy doesn't take any guff from anyone and sees things exactly as they are, even when adults are trying to shield her from something, but she doesn't yet understand how to make those thoughts translate. I think the story is really going to be about how young folks navigate change in their surroundings, in their friend groups, in their family, and as they grow up, and how they can make sense of situations that are constantly in flux. I can already see the story asking which parts of ourselves do we fight to keep and which parts do we let go of, and what does that say about us? There's also this idea of being stuck in no man's land in the sense that Mercy's family considers her old enough to babysit her cousins or help with her father's painting business, but they still treat her like a child in many ways, and she doesn't know what to make of that. So yeah, long story short, I'm glad I chose to read this, and I think I can definitely get it done before the end of October while still leaving room for another Latinx book. But tomorrow I will be going with my little cousins to the Living Desert Zoo for this trick-or-treat event they have every year, and it's super cute, so look forward to that.
Okay, so it's Sunday and I'm back with what will most likely be my final update. As you may have seen, spur of the moment this morning, I decided to finally read Hecotea by Lorena Alvarez Gomez, who is an incredible Colombian storyteller and artist. It is an amazing Own Voices Latinx picture book and sequel to Nightlights. The story is about a girl named Sandy who goes on a school field trip to the river and she wanders off and finds an empty turtle shell. And when she looks inside, she finds herself in this huge, breathtaking museum that is complete except for one piece. When Sandy asks Hecotea, the turtle, why this piece is missing, the turtle confesses that she was trying to render the landscape of the river when she encountered a vicious, destructive creature who scared her so much that she never went back. So of course, Sandy takes it upon herself to venture out there and she ends up having to confront this creature on her own. I love both this book and Nightlights because stylistically they're so unique. They're formatted almost like comics with panels and speech bubbles, even though they're picture books. And I think that really brings you into the story and makes it feel so dynamic. But more importantly, both of these books show Sandy confronting these very dark places in the world and in herself, and they show her pushing back against those forces. Like the creature in this story is really a conduit for self-doubt and complacency and how that doubt can place limits on our world and how we see ourselves. I think the story also explores the consequences of turning away from questions we don't want the answers to and how when we shield ourselves from the unknown, we're only making our world smaller and smaller and that is shown in a very literal sense. Sandy's curiosity and passion is something that makes her world and her life infinitely bigger than she could ever imagine and I appreciate this story showing that it is a a fight and a journey to keep an open heart, but that it's a fight worth undertaking no matter what. Suffice to say, I love this and I highly recommend both books in this series to readers of all ages. They're imaginative and magical and truly, truly special. So of course, I gave this one five stars. As for Mercy Suarez, I have about two hours left in the audiobook, so I may very well finish it tomorrow if I put my mind to it and really believe in myself. My opinion of the story has not changed at all since my last update. I am loving it and I really appreciate what the story is trying to accomplish. As I predicted, it's very much about Mercy confronting change and trying to come into her own when it seems like people are trying to keep her at arm's length and not let her be her fullest self. And can we just talk about how important it is to have stories like this for young folks where the main character doesn't have everything figured out and genuinely has moments of frustration where they're just furious at the unfairness of the world and where they lash out at people they love even though they know they shouldn't and where they're allowed to just be overwhelmed by their circumstances. It is a lot. What Mercy's going through is a lot. And the fact that she gets to feel all the ins and outs of navigating that pressure is really important. She's in that weird place where people expect her to be grown and put childish things away, but she's also trying to navigate the constraints of still being young and not handling things in the best way, and I really appreciate that this story sits right in that limbo space. It's awesome. I love Mercy's voice and her personality. I love the family dynamics that are both warm and complex. There's really nothing about this book so far that I don't like. But anyways, I hope this was a semi-interesting look into a week in my reading life. I completed three books and started another, and I also had a fun weekend, so I am calling it a success. Plus, I should really end this here because I think I'm going to go downstairs right now and finish Demon Slayer, which is going to take me through a series of emotions I would rather not document because it's going to be a lot. If you consider yourself to be a real one, leave a bike emoji in the comments below for Mercy Suarez, and I will catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye!